So, I've seen a couple of other voxel engines on YouTube lately with absolutely astronomical render distances, and suffice it to say that it's been making me a little bit jealous. So I thought that for this month's update, we would take the rendering distance of my voxel engine from this to this. This is Douglas, and welcome back to my Voxel devlog series. I'm building a Voxel game engine, an infinite world made of cubes where users can build and destroy cooperatively. The engine is currently in the midst of a graphics rewrite. I'm transitioning from OpenGL to WebGPU, and in the process, I've been adding a whole bunch of exciting new features to my renderer. This month in particular, I've accomplished three things. I've vastly improved the render distance, I've added a pretty skybox, and I've upgraded my transparency system so that it looks good from a variety of perspectives. So let's get started by uncovering the secrets of how to draw insane amounts of voxels. Now I want to start by having a look at another voxel engine. This is a video by Ethan Gore. And honestly, this project in particular is what inspired me to try and better my own renderer. So in this engine, the entire world is apparently visible on screen. And the world is composed of 4 billion voxels in each direction. So if we were to imagine that this entire world were stored in memory at once, and as a naive estimate, let's say that the world is one byte per voxel, then this world would take 2 to the 32 cubed bytes of memory. To put this into perspective, if you were to try and store this data using the video RAM of the 4080, you would need over 10 to the 18 4080s in order to store the entire voxel world in memory at once. So there's a trick here. Those of you who are familiar with game development will probably have guessed the trick already. It is a level of detail system. So what are levels of detail? Well, when an object in a game gets far away from the camera, it's no longer possible to resolve every single little bit of information on that object. Each individual pixel is no longer visible, so it would be a waste of resources to draw that object at full quality. Video games are able to save on performance by swapping out models which are far away from the camera with lower res versions of the models that have lower quality textures and less triangles to draw. This reduces load on the graphics card and means that the game can draw so much more of the scene because objects that are far away don't take up as much processing power. Simple, right? But when it comes to using LODs and voxel engines, the devil is in the details. The first step to getting this working in my voxel engine was to generate the LODs on the server. In previous iterations of my engine, I did have levels of detail, but the way things worked is the server would load chunks around the player in full quality, and once the player had received those chunks, it might downsample some of them to create lower levels of detail. And this system was okay because it did save processing power on the graphics card but it meant that any area of the world that the client wanted to display, the server would have to load and simulate. And this was a big waste because the server doesn't need to simulate something five chunks behind the player, like this, the player's not over there, the player's not interacting with everything. But the player still might want to display that data. So my new system works not by generating chunks in full detail at all, it skips right to creating the LODs from scratch, and this was a feature that I inconspicuously implemented in my terrain generation video two episodes ago. If you remember that, I secretly added the ability for the terrain generators to work on different scales. So the terrain generators could create models with a scale of one world unit per voxel, or two world units per voxel, or four, or eight. And what this has allowed me to do is now when the client requests an LOD from the server, if the server needs to generate it, it doesn't have to load full quality chunks, it just tells the terrain generation system to spit out a model with a lower world unit to voxel ratio. Once the level of detail is generated, it is sent to the client 
which organizes all regions of the world into an octree, which is a data structure that partitions 3D space into a whole bunch of variable sized cubes. Each cube that you see on screen around the player represents a single level of detail. For every single cube on screen, the engine will use the same amount of voxels, the same amount of processing power to draw. You'll notice that regions which are closer to the player are more finely subdivided. So those cubes are going to be smaller and they're going to appear to have more detail to the player. And that's the level of detail system to make a long story short. Whenever the client requests one, just generate it fresh on the server and send it over. But there's a subtle problem here and it takes quite a bit of logistics to fix. Take a moment to see if you can guess what the problem is. And while you do, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, CodeCrafters. CodeCrafters is the place to go to become a better developer. CodeCrafters isn't like the other coding websites. It features eight unique challenges which you can complete in a language of your choice. It comes with Git integration and allows you to easily run your code against a suite of pre-written tests, helping you to find bugs and better your own implementation. If you've ever wanted to learn how real-world software like SQLite, Docker, or HTTP works, or if you just want to try out a new language, then CodeCrafters is for you. Each long-form project builds the skills that you need to mature as a developer. Check out the link in the description to get started for free today, and get 40% off if you upgrade to a paid account within three days. Thanks again to CodeCrafters for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the voxels. The drawback with this technique is that it does not innately support user edits. From my perspective, one of the most integral parts of a voxel engine is the ability to modify the world, create and destroy, and see the changes reflected in real time. But if we're generating the LODs from scratch, the user could build a tower and then fly away from it, and that tower won't be included in the output that the terrain generator spits out for a lower level of detail. How do we fix this? A hell of a lot of bookkeeping. To tackle this problem, I built a system that caches the LODs and saves them to disk whenever they are generated. When the user creates and destroys any part of the world, the parts of the world that were edited are flagged as dirty, and the game traverses the level of detail octree, flagging all of the enclosing octants which correspond to larger LODs as having been edited since the last time that the LOD was loaded. Then, when some player comes along and attempts to request those higher LODs, before generating them from scratch, the server will attempt to load them from the game save file, and it will also check which sub-octants of a given LOD are dirty. If any sub-octants are marked as dirty, the game will fetch the higher quality data from that sub-octant, so if we've got a level 3 LOD, the game will load the level 2 LODs for any dirty sub-octants, and then downsample them and basically recombine them with the previous level 3 LOD in order to create a new level of detail representation for this region, which factors the edits into it. And so what this means is that in my game now, if a user digs a hole into the ground or builds a tower or something, when we zoom out from it, that structure is still there. This is what I'm most proud of with this new system. It sort of gets the best of both worlds, right? On the server side, generating the LODs without having to load the full quality version of regions improves performance and saves memory, allowing me to simulate a lot more of the world that's truly necessary and not waste resources on other things. At the same time, the LOD system feels fully immersive to the client because if the client makes changes and then attempts to view them from far away, everything just works. But render distance is not all. I've made a number of other quality of life improvements to the engine. I took some time to be a bit more artistic and add a procedurally generated skybox to my engine. The skybox features a full day-night cycle with the sun and moon and stars, configurable background colors, so the skybox is very customizable. 
and also a controllable amount of clouds so it's easy to create both sunny and cloudy scenes. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I look forward to using the day-night cycle as a gameplay mechanic of some kind in the future. Another thing that I did was improve my rendering of transparent objects. I use a technique called Order Independent Transparency to draw things that are partially see-through. The idea behind Order Independent Transparency is that correctly drawing transparent objects is very difficult because the relative depth of the objects to one another, which transparent object is in front, makes a difference with respect to the color that you actually see. Order independent transparency does away with the requirement to draw objects in back to front order, as would normally be required, by basically just gathering all of the little fragments, all of the pixels from the individual objects, and blending them together using a simple weighted average. A weighted average is just addition and multiplication, it's linear, so it doesn't matter the order in which you draw the objects to create this average. However, my order independent transparency implementation came out looking a little bit weird. The good news is, I made the simple mistake of completely forgetting a weighting function. If you take your average by just calculating the colors for all of the fragments, all of the pieces of an object that overlap a pixel, and then you just add them together and average them like you learned to do in grade school, you will get a result that doesn't depend at all on the order of the objects relative to the camera. So if you look at this scene here, when the green object is in front, as opposed to when the red object is in front, the color that you see is exactly the same on the portions of the screen that are covered by both. But we can do better than this, we can get a lot closer to correct transparency if we choose a weighting function such that fragments which are closer to the camera have a higher weight. So this means that if you take a red object, an orange object, like you see on screen here, since when I'm drawing the red fragments, they're closer to the camera, if I assign these fragments a higher weight, then those fragments will contribute more of their color to what ultimately ends up on screen. And if I were to move the camera around, now the orange objects are closer to the camera, they'd be receiving a higher weighting. And so the final color that appears on screen for all of these fragments will look more orange. In this way, by choosing the right weighting function, you can kind of emulate the effect of drawing objects in back to front order. So the good news is my implementation was just missing a weighting function completely, but I added one in and you can see the results are so much better. With these changes in place, the renderer for my engine is almost done, and there's really just one or two more features that I want to add, but overall I feel like I've pushed greedy meshing and voxel rasterization tech as far as I can possibly go, to be honest. Thus, after I get those last few things implemented, I really want to move toward working on modding and gameplay functionality so that I can turn this project into something I can truly release. If you want to be a part of what comes next, then don't forget to leave a like, and also subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments or questions, then please leave them down below, and also don't forget to check out Code Crafters, the link is in the description. Otherwise, have a spectacular day.